Hello, Robert Dick here. This is video example three from my article, Acoustics, Real Time, Real Life, Why the Flute and Flutist Had to Evolve. So, um, now, what's the perception that we have holes of two sizes, large and small, uh, had really sunk in, and once the realization that, well, gee, it's the pattern of motion of the holes, often obscured by the finger action of the mechanism, but once we really start thinking about what happens with the holes, well then, let's see what happens. For example, this multiphonic, at it in terms of what's going on with the holes. Everything is closed until we come to one small hole and then we have one, two, three, four holes closed. So transposition of that is relatively simple for a short way. Each half step transposition, I'm moving the small hole up one chromatic position and I'm lifting one hole open at the end of the flute. So we have the same pattern of open and closed holes, just moved up a position. And we can do that again. As we move the small hole now to the F key, so the small hole started in the D key, the E key, and then the F key. Now, after, if we want to go a half step higher, well, it's just too bad um, because we need a small hole right there and it doesn't exist. And if we'd like to go another half step higher, it doesn't exist. So then we have a small hole again. Okay, so okay, and there, see our small hole and one, two, three, four holes closed. And then we can have one more transposition. And then we also have another key with no perforation, another key with no perforation. Um, this is so typical, and that's a very simple pattern. Now, so many multiphonics on the Bame flute are not movable at all. For example, now take a look at that. Looking at it from the top down, everything is closed, and we have one small hole open, followed by one, two, three, four holes closed, followed by two small holes open, followed by one, two more holes closed. Now, it turns out you can't go down and you can't go up and preserve this pattern. So that multiphonic only can happen at this pitch level. And it's this lovely combination of A natural, B natural, and F natural. So, um, and that is very restrictive to um, what you can do musically um, because when you want that sound you have to go to that pitch level. It makes every piece of music that uses that sound sound the same. Now my first effort to address this um, was to create a flute with a fingering system with all independent keys. And here it is. This is the prototype built in um, 
1982 by, actually 1984, by Albert Cooper in London. Um, and um, as you can see, every hole, every key on the main line, um, here, here, there, 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 every key is an open hole cup. So we won't run into this problem of this mixture of open hole and closed hole keys. Um, and in order to play this flute, one needs to learn a new fingering system. Um, and unfortunately, this flute <laughs> reflects the skills and lack of skills of its designer, namely me, in that it has a wonderful sound, but it flops around like a fish when you try to play it. And I'm hoping to partner with um, a flute maker eventually to resolve that. Um, the mistakes I made were to use the right hand thumb as a playing finger because what happens when you have to pick it up and you have other keys up? Who's holding the flute? So the real balance issues here. Uh, but um, the identity, for example, of, of how your fingers move and how the sound moves is very clear. So. Unfortunately, in terms of real life and real time, um, this remains a prototype. Um, it proves the concept, and now we have to find a way to actually realize it.